Casita Bakery is one of Deltona's newest restaurants, with its grand opening in October of 2015. It is a bakery with a great assortment of fresh baked pastries, both sweet and savory. But don't think the menu is limited to light fare. There is a good selection of soups and sandwiches, a few that are unique to Mi Casita. And the name Mi Casita, which translates to My Cozy Home, really says it all in describing the hunger-satisfying recipes. A true down-home style of Caribbean cooking with many of the recipes being handed down from generation to generation. And the person calling the shots in the kitchen is Gamalier Santiago, or Gama for short. In this episode, a Puerto Rican quesito, fresh and hot fried yuca and plantain chips, and Mi Casita's Cuban sandwich with its fresh roasted pork shoulder and pickles prepared on site. Gama, you guys also make your own yuca chips and plantain chips here at the restaurant. Yeah. Okay, so show me how you do that. So first we, we buy the yuca, fresh, local too, mm -hmm. and then we just peel it. Okay. Real simple. And that's just a, a vegetable peel, so it peels pretty pretty fast, pretty easy. Yeah, pretty easy. And yuca, that's, it's, a, it, it's like a potato. It will, it's like a root vegetable. Yeah. Some people call it um, uh, cassava. Okay. So there's a lot in Miami, mm -hmm. and you can see me in the Caribbean too. Yeah. Nice starchy, also a little bit sweet. Yeah. That's why I like the yuca. Mm -hmm. So after you peel it real nice, yeah. you go to the second step. Okay. And you slice it. And this it. is? This is a mandolin. Okay. It's, uh, it's expensive, but, mm -hmm. but real good too. Okay. So, Especially if you're going to slice something that you want consistently thin slices, or exactly. all the same thickness. Okay. Yeah, you want to be consistent. So you just go like this without cutting yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, and I can see, yeah, I see how thin the, the, they're coming out. See? So that's like And you're that. letting them go into water. I let them into water, and I put a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and a little bit of crushed garlic. Okay. So you get the nice garlicky flavor, so you see? Yeah, nice. they're really thin, but they're, I said they're the same thickness. The same thickness. So when you fry them, they all fry at the same time. At the same time. Okay. Not something more, something less, and yeah. overcook. So that's like, that's the yuca. Okay. And the next one is the plantain. And then the plantain. Mm -hmm. So we just go like this. And also I want, I guess it's like kind of obvious, but okay, plantains, are, the, the skin is thick. But yeah. the way that you're cutting through this with the knife, the knife is pretty sharp. Exactly. So what the point I'm getting to with the sharp knife with the mandolin, this kind of leads back to what you were saying before that uh, you work for a sushi, uh, sushi, sushi chef. Yeah, I, I, was trained, I was training with a sushi chef. He was a 10 year sushi, still working. Uh huh. Right now he's working one of the top 10 restaurant, a sushi restaurant in America. Okay. So that's really neat. So what, tell me about being a sushi, sushi chef. You yeah. say that 10 times fast. Sushi <laughs> chef, right. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was an awesome, awesome experience. A lot of discipline. Yeah. A lot of cleanness, a lot of knife skills. A lot of sharpening. Mm -hmm. like, I will bring my knives, and he will touch it. He will be like, mm -mm, "Not good enough." I'm like, "Wow, I gotta, I gotta do it even better." But it's awesome because when he left, um, I was practically taking over with another guy that yeah. also taught me. Uh huh. Really, really, both. It was an awesome experience. So they they taught you really. It's like the, uh, the the advantages of knowing how to sharpen a knife because a lot of people don't think they know how and yeah. why you want to have a knife that's that sharp because you let the knife do the, the knife does the work when it's sharp, right? Exactly, and then it's, the meat is much even, it's even better. Mm -hmm. You don't oxidize the meat, uh, the product too. Okay. Because when the product's oxidized quick, it means your knife is not sharp enough. Because it's crushing it instead of slicing through. Like herbs, like lettuce, all yeah. that stuff, you're crushing it, you're not cutting it. So that's why it's really important to have a sharp knife. Okay. So and this guy goes through the mandolin also, right? Mandolin also, you do the same. So I like to do it like a little... Bit of an angle? A little bit of an angle, of course. Yeah, and again, I can see the, the slices are falling out. Exactly. And they're all, you know, the same thickness. Same thickness, like that. And this is the same type of water that has a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic? A little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic, and nice and thick. Mm-hmm. Nice and thin. There yeah. we go, there we go. But this, this, the thickness is all the same. Exactly. So nice, consistent. Okay. So that's really I, nice. 
So then, once they're in the water, do they have to soak for a certain amount of time, or do they? Uh, not you do, really. You can drain them pretty quickly and then fry them. The, the plantain you can do pretty quick. The yuca, you can do it also, preferably um, let it drain because it has so much starch. Okay. You can almost make milk with yuca. Oh really? It, it has so much starch, okay. so much white. So the less carbs, the less starch, the more crispier. It's okay. like potatoes. Man. Okay, now that's interesting. I didn't know that, that, yeah. that that's why you can wind up with something that you think it's going to be crispy, but it's soggy. Because, yeah, okay. it needs to be all less starch, the less carb it has, mm -hmm. the more crispier it will get. So okay, that's so like even with better. potatoes and with this, is it letting this, and the starch will draw out if it sits in the water. Exactly. Okay, it and you don't need it so much in there, but here it's more important. Here more important, yeah, okay. of course. Yeah. So you have the chip slice, they've been drained. Mm -hmm. So now the next step is the deep fryer? Yeah, deep fry, and I have to get them golden brown delicious. Okay. And those are the plantain? These are the plantain chips. Okay. Look at that. And here's the yuca. The chips. So now we just deep fry it. Okay. Move it around so they don't stick. Yeah, okay. okay. Do the same with the yuca. Yeah. Now, how long do you let them cook? Usually, I let them cook for one and a half, two minutes or so. Okay, and they cook about the same amount of time? Exactly, both, yeah. Okay. You get it nice and crispy. And you'll see the color? Yeah. That'll be your indication? Exactly, the color, and when I touch it with the tongue. Okay, if, it's stuck, if, it, if it gives you a resistance? Uh -huh. okay. Then you know it's crispy. Now, if somebody wanted to make these at home, like in a frying pan or like you know could they do that you know now granted they have to be careful yeah they, they can um i recommend you buy a thermometer yeah and then you know buy a regular vegetable oil yeah and then put it to 325 okay and when you get 325 you deep fry it okay and the same you know just shake it around with the tongs yeah make sure that like you said they don't stick they don't stick together and then it will be nice and crisp so now they're ready okay just grab it Rinse it a little bit. Uh huh. See the sound? Yep. Crispy sound. And crispy sound. Now, you season them while they're still really hot. Exactly. While they're hot, because that way they stick to that. The, okay, stick so the seasoning the... will stick to it. Yeah, exactly. And then you just fry it. Okay. We'll keep these hot. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Really crispy. Nice, crispy, crunchy. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, real good. It's like so, a flat post on it. Exactly. So, then you get the yuca. The same thing. You season it while it's hot. You season it while it's hot. And then you try it. Okay. There we go. There. Okay, come on. Oh, wow. That's good. That's crispy. Mm-hmm. A little bit more bite to it. It's good. Yeah. So you guys prepare a lot of your own meats here at the restaurant. So what do we have here? So in here we have the pork shoulder. Yeah. This is, could be like the right side of the pork. Mm-hmm. Right there. So what we're always looking for is nice skin, nice okay. fat. Okay. And then like six to eight pounds. Okay. Now with for. the skin, that gives you like like a second you know second product, right? Practically, yeah. Yeah. Some people throw it away. We eat it. We put it in the meat. We make our famous chicharrón. Okay. So chicharrón's come from. Okay. This is right here, the chicharrón. Okay. <laughs> cool. Very good. So now, uh, how do you season this guy? So practically really easy. So okay. we don't go too crazy. We just we clean it. Uh huh. We clean it. We make. Couple holes. Okay. And then we put garlic teeth. Okay. I do it this way. Yeah. That way the garlic is inside the meat. Okay. And it's not burnt. Some place sometimes you burn it and when yeah. you burn garlic it's like bitter. Yeah. You mm -hmm. don't you don't want to burn garlic. So so a couple of teeth of garlic. Mm-hmm. Nice amount of salt. Okay. You want that flavor to come out. Yeah. Nice amount of black pepper. Okay. Nice amount of, of mixed herbs. Okay. Seasoning. That's, uh, let me see, that's, uh, 
Uh, it's a double adobo. chong. Okay. Ad ad yeah. Okay. It's a double chong. It's from mostly Hispanic usage. Okay. It's good for the for the ports and turkey. Mm -hmm. So um, you season also the the skin. Okay. Yeah. The chicharron. The chicharron. Yeah. Chicharron. You want to make sure that that's that's seasoned also. Exactly. So you want to have a nice flavor on the chicharron. Mm-hmm. And then you just turn around. And you season the other side too. You, you have to do both sides. Yeah, the whole area, the whole pork shoulder. Okay. Now, once this is seasoned, uh, then it goes into the oven? It goes into the oven. It will go for at least six to seven hours. Mm -hmm. So this goes early, early in the morning. Okay. So that way it's like practically it, melt. Okay. Just. And what would the oven be set at? It will be set at 300, very okay. low. Okay, so low heat for a long time. Exactly. That exactly. way, it, you let it, like like you said, it's like it falls apart. It falls apart. It's just when you bite the sandwich, it's just mm -hmm. nice and easy and melting. Really good. Beautiful. Well, that looks good. That's what you're looking for, nice and crispy. Yeah? Okay. That's, that's what you call our chicharron. Okay. So here we go. Take it out of here. It's crackling. It's cracking, right? Oh, that smells, smells oh wonderful. Oh my God. So, uh, nice it smells meat. really good. A nice chicharron. You want to mm -hmm. have a bite? A pedacito aquí. Yeah. Hot. Ooh. That was good. Nice and crispy. Mmm. Tasty. It's and nice off the bone. Mm -hmm. It just comes out of the bone real yeah. quick. Very nice. You start. Now you just pull it apart? Pull it apart. That's it. Look. Oh my God. It looks like it wants to fall apart just by looking at it. You're right. <laughs> See, just. And now, and this cooks, like you said, 300 degrees for six to seven hours? Six to seven hours. Because that's what you're looking for. Nice and melty, nice and warm. Now, here at the restaurant, you're the lead chef, right? Yeah, I'm the head chef. Um, I developed the menu. Mm -hmm. I developed the concept, the idea. Um, the name was a family. Mm -hmm. The whole family decided on calling me Casita because that's like your house. My you house, your house. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the other sandwiches that he says is really popular is a Cuban sandwich. Yeah. Okay, so show me how you fix one. All right, so after we roast the pork, yeah. we shred it over nice, put it in the flat top, put it in the griddle. So we make it really warm. Okay. Then we warm our ham. Okay. So Cuban sandwich, the I guess like the, the critical ingredients, roast pork and ham. Yeah, roast pork, ham, the Swiss cheese, um, pickles, and okay. mustard. Okay, now with the pickles, tell me about those, because... Yeah, what's cool about it is um, we make our own pickles. Yeah. So usually how we do, um, we buy 10 cucumbers. Yeah. We slice them by hand. Yeah. We make our brine. Our brine has uh, water, apple cider vinegar, sugar, um, turmeric, celery seed, and, mm -hmm. and mustard seeds. Okay. So you got that nice combination. They're sweet. They're yeah, because I was going to taste it. It's not, it didn't have a real briny taste to it, but it was kind of a mix of sweet and briny. It wasn't real uh -huh. sweet, like a sweet pickle, but. Yeah, so that's what's nice about it. This is my recipe. I came, I came up with it. Oh, so you yeah. those are, so Gamma's pickles. Okay. That's Gamma's pickle, practically. I should call them like that. Yeah, Gamma's pickle. But no, so there's many recipes, but that's, mm -hmm. you know, I come up with that one. Just to make it sweet, not too brine, not too yeah. strong. Even kids can have it, and they'll like it. Okay, so then you, you're heating up the roast pork, you heat up the uh, the ham. Yeah. And with a Cuban sandwich, typically I've always seen them that they're, they're pressed or they're toasted, right? Yeah, you either press or to toast it, yeah, the same. So you get that nice, crunchy, and melt, and just press all the ingredients together, when you bite, it's like, they're not everywhere, they're together. It, it's all, it, it's so all. Now with the meat, you're just tip, you're, you're just like heating it up right now, right? Practically, yeah. Heating it off, because it's been roasted, it's been cooked. So now we just assemble it. Okay. And then I put, put cheese on the ham. Nice 
cheese is melted. Okay. And it's Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese, yeah. Okay. Some places they put Gouda. But That's interesting. Yeah, typically it's a Swiss cheese. But you don't put, you, you wouldn't put like a cheddar cheese on it because isn't that kind of strong? Yeah, it's too strong for it. And okay. this is like a Miami thing, you know? Okay. So, you know, they have Swiss, they have ham, they have mm -hmm. roasted pork. Hey, Cuban sandwich. So nice. That's there. Mm -hmm. and now we put our homemade pickles. Uh huh. Really nice. And then we put our homemade mustard too. Oh, homemade. Okay, yeah. How do you make your own mustard? Well, what we do is we buy the ground mustard. Yeah. And then we put um, uh, vinegar. Yeah. A little bit of sugar. A little bit of honey. Because mustard is real. Ground mustard is really strong. Yeah. So to reduce the, the heat, yeah. and then we put a little bit of celery seeds, and then you mix it, and that's it. You okay. let it rest, and you put a little more vinegar, and that's it. So here we go. Boom. And then when you put the top bun on, and now it's gonna go get pressed. And how long does it press? Press for like uh, a minute. Okay, a minute? Not much. So we go over here. So that's a that's a finished Cuban. That's a finished Cuban, yeah. Okay. So now we just after it's been <coughs> pressed. Oh, the bread sounds <coughs> nice and crispy. Yeah, <clears throat> I can smell it really nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, that looks cool. that looks wonderful. As you can see, the the roast pork, you see the ham, the pickles, the cheese. Exactly. Excellent. So it's really hot. So be careful. Okay. Yeah, a little bit on the hot side. Mmm, <laughs> that was good. That was really good. Nice combination. Mm -hmm. It's a little strong, the mustard, but it's not too much. The mustard has just enough of an enhancement. Mm -hmm. it, it blends with the pickles, because so the pickles have a little bit of sweetness to offset the tartness. Mmm. I don't want to lose that. Caliente. It's hot. That was yeah. good. That was really good. That's the best way to have it. Really, really hot, nice and fresh. Spring, summer, winter, or fall. Typically, we're doing yard cleanup. Sometimes that yard cleanup is a small chore, like mowing the yard or raking the leaves. Other times, it's a major project, trimming dead branches, pulling up dead shrubs, cleaning palm trees. All in all, it can make for a big pile of yard waste. So when you're ready to take the yard waste out to the curb for pickup, a couple of things to remember. Leaves, grass clippings, small branches, you can put those into a bag that's 30 to 33 gallons in size. And remember, the weight limit is 60 pounds. Larger branches and palm fronds, they need to be cut so they're four feet in length. And then you should bundle them together so that way they don't scatter when they're put out to the street. And with the larger branches and fronds, remember the number six. No more than six inches in diameter and no heavier than 60 pounds. When you gather all the yard waste, you can now take up to a total of 16 bags and bundles to the curb for pickup. Together we can do this, Deltona. Trash. It goes in the bin. So what we start is Put a little bit of sugar okay. on, the, on the table, and then we put our puff pastry on top. Okay, now puff pastry, explain what that is, because some people may not know what puff pastry is. It's something simple, simple and difficult at the same time. It's okay. just a mix of flour, egg, and lots and lots of butter. Okay. So you make a dough, and then when you have the dough, you put butter, you fold it, okay. and you roll it out. Roll it mm -hmm. out, you put more butter, 
fold it. Okay. And then you start making layers and layers and layers of okay. flour, of, of butter and dough, and that's how you get the puff pastry. Okay. So the when it's, that's why it's puff. Yeah. So when it when it cooks, I guess the butter it kind of like helps it rise. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So that's puff pastry. So and that, you have sugar on the on one side. So sugar one side, sugar on the other. Okay. And this is just regular granulated sugar. Re regular granulated sugar. Right? Okay. So after you get sugar. Okay. You roll it out a little bit. Okay, and that's it. Kind of like it pushes the, the pushes sugar the into sugar it. Sugar in there, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Now this quesito is that kind of like a traditional dessert. Yeah, it's a traditional dessert from the Puerto Rico. Okay. And then there's many ways to do it. You can roll it. You can fold it. Okay. But it's just mostly cream cheese, and uh -huh. um, some sometimes they put guava too. So, well, uh, a pasta guayaba. Yeah, okay. like pasta okay. guayaba. Okay. So that's really yummy too. But the popular one and the typical one is cream cheese. Okay. We and that's what we're doing sure. now. That's exactly. the one we're going to make. Okay. So we fold it. So that's about what you're looking for. Okay. After that's done. And now you're going to cut it. Uh, exactly. Okay. You're going to cut it and. Better a pizza cutter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much easier. So then you go half here. Okay, so you Boom. wind up with six, six pieces. Okay. That one came out a little off, but that's yeah. fine. This this guy has better luck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's simple, you know, after yeah. you got your squares, mm -hmm. you can fold it a little bit more if you want. Okay. Now when you cook them, uh, how long do they cook and what temperature in the oven? Um, you cook them for like uh, 20, 15, 20 minutes uh -huh. at 325. Okay. Because you want the cheese to be melted, you want the sugar to crystallize, and you want to have nice size. Okay. And puffy and golden brown too. Okay. Now, this is cream cheese. Now, you're telling me before that it's not just regular cream cheese, that you do something special with it. Yeah, with the cream cheese, we beat it, we beat it mm -hmm. and then we add sugar. Okay, so you sweeten it. Okay. Exactly, sweeten it and it makes it fluffy. Okay. And it's just easier when you make your quesitos. Okay, and you have that in a, uh, is that a pastry bag or is that just like a baggie? Or? Yeah, it's a pastry bag. Okay. Regular pastry bag, you can find it, you know, in the supermarket. Okay. So, I use a little bit of water just okay. to... And that that glue. helps moisten the... Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So, you just go one, one fold, one fold, right, and then go like this, and then you go like this. Okay, so you pull, you, you pull give it a stretch, it, okay? You want to have, there you go, and then that's your quesito. Okay. Pull it like that. Okay. So you do the same over here, you can use this one. Okay, the lucky guy? The lucky guy, yeah. Okay. Get the lucky guy. <laughs> okay, now, you, I notice the amount of cheese that you're putting there. I guess you, don't, you want to be be careful of how much yeah. you put because you don't want it to like pop out. Yeah. Okay. You want to keep it inside the the quesito, okay. inside the puff pastry. You know. So like that. Fold it. Fold it once. Inside. And then you tuck it into the sides tuck like that. Tuck it in. Yeah. You roll it. You stretch out that tail. That tail. And you want to go like that. It's a really nice quesito right there. Okay, and then like you said, they go into the oven for? For 15, 20 minutes or okay, so. Okay, at 325? At 325. Okay. Yeah. So here's the finishing product. Mm -hmm. Our very, very popular quesito. Okay. See, like I said, nice uh, golden brown delicious, yeah. nice and puffy, mm -hmm. the cheese inside. And at the end, we put a glaze of honey. Okay. And that's it. You can cut it. Okay. Eat it, the whole thing, it don't, it don't matter. Let's give it a shot. I'll go for it. Oh yeah, you can see it with all the different layers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mmm. Let me see. Very good. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice really and good. creamy and sweet. Real sweet. Yeah. Pastry real delicate. Mm-hmm. That honey adds a good touch. Yeah, exactly. Mmm. So you guys switch one and let me see. Very good. It's like a cheesecake you hold in your hand. They're addicted.
Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Deltona TV for more Great Bites.